Hey guys, in this video we will be talking about how to use the Johnson Controls Occupancy Override button that is common on a lot of their network thermostats. What we're going to do here is give an overview of how to use this button to turn on the lights within a particular area. So here we are within our Metasys Extended Architecture and we are looking at the uh, VAV and here is the lighting control module for this particular room. This is the point that we will be turning on through the system using a point, the control point that we will add to the VAV control program that utilizes the uh, occupancy uh, override. The first thing we do is we have to determine the address for the VAV. So we're going to load the program from the VAV into the controller configuration tool. Once we get to this screen here, we are going to let the program pull everything on the network. However, you can enter the address manually. Uh, once you have the network pulled, you just highlight the one you want, press next. It's going to give you a review screen and we're going to upload that program into CCT. It takes just a few minutes over the network and the program. Here we have the program. We went ahead and upgraded this to the new version of CCT uh, from what the program was originally written in. And what we're going to do now is we are going to right click on the input section and we're going to select new. We're going to use our filter and simply type in OCC for occupancy. Since these uh, thermostats are a network sensor, it uh, you know we have quite a few options here. We want to select the one that is for the SAB network. So we're going to highlight that. You notice it is a temp override temp occupancy override and we have one selected we press next and it is going to add that to our system now that we have done that uh, there seems to be something within the version of CCT that I'm using here whenever you do this you have to at least go to the uh, define hardware tab or it will not let you download the program go to the point assignments and or it will not let you download the program into the controller for some reason now we're just going to save this so I go up to file and save and I generally like to give the programs a very unique identifier I generally will name them with the system name as well as the FC trunk uh, if you're on a building that has uh, multiple trunks and then I also like to include the address for the particular VAV in that name as well. That way it kind of cuts down on the confusion of whether or not that particular program is the specific one for uh, the VAV that you're working with. Now then that we have the program saved, what I'm going to do now is load this back into that VAV. Now the unique thing about the CCT programs is it is only going to let me load the program into the box that it is programmed for, you know, based upon that address. Since this is a newer version of CCT, I have got to load the boot section. I've got to basically upgrade the controller. So it's going to take a bit of time, so I'm going to pause this video and then we will come right back. Here we are. Uh, we have the majority of the program downloaded into the controller we're now loading the application and once the application loads completely into the controller we will be able to go back into Metasys and then load and pull that point into the Metasys system and we have everything done here so we're just going to go back into Metasys I'm going to highlight the particular VAV I'm going to go up to insert field point since this is a BACnet uh, controller, I can use the auto-discover feature, which saves us a lot of time. 
So I'm going to let that run. It's going to populate all the points that are exposed in this particular controller. And once it finishes its scan, we will just close this window. And it takes it a couple of minutes to scan. And I'm just going to close this window. And here is the point that I want. So I'm just going to double click that. And I'm going to hit next. And hit finish. Now then, I do not want to add any trends or alarms, so I'm just going to hit done. Now when I double click on my controller, I can see the point here. The two states of this are active and inactive. Currently, it is inactive, but if I were to press that button, it would go active, and that's what we want. Now then, I'm going to go down to an interlock that we already have set up where we tied the uh, uh, lighting schedule to zone occupancy. And what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to add that point to our interlock. I want to change this to an OR type system because I want either one of these two uh, blocks to be able to turn those lights on, whether it's the schedule or the occupancy override. Now I'm going to drill down into my network and I'm going to find that point in my controller that we have just added. And let's see. These systems can get quite large, as you're well aware. Expand this up just a little bit. Give us a little more working room. And here we are. Here it is. Now then, I have that added to my controller. Uh, when it goes active, that is when I want it to turn on my lights. Okay, you want to have a time delay of turning off or whenever that switches back to inactive, it will turn your lights off. You know, 3600 seconds is a half hour, just whatever time frame that you're needing. And it will turn, uh, once so that goes active through your interlock, it will turn on the light command. Anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful. If it is, drop me a comment down below, give it a thumbs up, and thanks for watching. Oh, 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 oh,